hunger for movement, the profoundest and most compelling of American racial hungers. Therefore, the automobile became the opium of the American people. I was looking for that drug too, and to get truly high, I drove that massive red vehicle. What I didn't know was that the car would show me some other American virtues. All the way, right? Yeah. yeah. Right behind it is a place called Terry Service. If you need to have them take a look at your car, they'll take a look at your car there. And they're pretty good. Hinter mir laufen die beiden Leute gerade und versuchen Hilfe zu holen. Unsere Karre hat äh, völlig versagt, die Batterie ist alle. Ähm, äh, der Auspuff war kaputt, wir haben uns gerade bis hierher geschleppt und hatten aber, äh, wir dachten halt, dass hier die Route 66 ist oder so. Ja und ja, äh, mal sehen was der Tag noch bringt. Long before I even knew where the US was, I had realized that there was really only one way to make a road trip in a huge old American car, a car to outrage any rule of rationality. From a land where two liters only referred to soda, the guys from Hollywood had provided the stereotypes. The sunglasses, the beer and the drugs. Route 66 sounded good too. So what I was looking for was one of the last American convertibles. And I found one in California. I left Germany for the States, then had the beast shipped transcontinental to the East Coast. I had only three weeks to get the car back to California. But first of all, 
I had to pick up my cameraman and my consultant at the Dallas airport in Washington DC. My cameraman, stiff, perfectionist. My consultant, pragmatic, erratic. We were going to drive cross country. Washington DC, New York, Las Vegas, San Diego. 4,000 miles, we would sleep in the car and eat at McDonald's. That was the plan. The plan fails. The car breaks down before I reach the airport. No backfiring, no bursting tire, no nothing. Just a total loss of acceleration. What happened? I thought these old cars run forever. Not sure if the car can be fixed, but damn sure that we will need help. Thank God my cameraman has got a relative here in Washington. And this relative is Uncle Joe. Joe has been living here since the time when our car was still in the Cadillac dealer's showroom. A time when responsible men were moved to tears just by looking at its beauty. Nobody will cry for our car. The only real concern is for the time that it will take in the dealer's garage. But for all that, while we sit in the felt seats of a Mazda and float through the capital, we know for sure that we will need that Cadillac. No Mazda, no Hyundai Pony, no. We need a car that sounds like an angry grizzly with a hood the size of a king-size bed and a trunk that could easily be converted into a jacuzzi. And God knows, we will not drive a car whose name sounds like an Asian venereal disease. <laughs> Until we get our Cadillac back on the road, we will stay at Joe's place. Gate. Joe punished the problem with us. Stuck before we can even draw a single mile nearer to the west coast. I'd got the caddy in San Diego from a shady freak for 2000 in cash plus a 500 deposit. No contract, no papers. Probably a stolen vehicle. Whatever. If you want to stab in it, we've got to fix it. You got an interesting story here. You call the San Diego radio and television stations and the newspaper out there, the San Diego Union. You said here, and the story is here we are, three young guys from Germany trying to live our dream. We rent this old car to go across Route 66. This is our hope all our lives. Mm -hmm. And this guy leases us a car, and it breaks down in Virginia, and he's going to charge us that outrageous rate. We've already spent. $1,700, another 500 he wants to pay another 500 We just feel stranded. We can't understand that this is the American way of doing things. You know, we're so destroyed. And you tell the guy you're doing that. I don't know. Joe's idea is not a bad one. But we are too lazy for big press campaigns. I sent some idle threats to the dude I got the car from. His reply reads as follows. I'll give a damn about your shit. The caddy was towed to a garage where they declined to touch it. So we looked for the most expensive dealer around, hoping that he would be more cooperative. Getting the car towed there was a drama in itself. Monday morning, everybody call. Monday morning. Hello. Hi, Janet. Uh, we have a car that we need towed from Lorton, Virginia, to Alexandria, Virginia. Sure. Are you there with the car now? No. Is anybody with us? Not right now, but we can get over there. How long does it take you to get to where the car is? 30 minutes. Okay, then you have to call me back. I can't take a, I can't take a road call until you're within at least 10 to 15 minutes of the car. 
Because if the driver gets there before you do, it's the race to call. He just leaves. So we have to call you 10 or 15. It's hard to get through to you folks, though. Is there another number other than... No, this is the number. Well, I've been on hold for 10 minutes. Yes, because we've got 10 calls, wait, 11 calls right now waiting for, for us to take. All right, so there's no way you can... All right, there's no phone within five miles of the place where the car is at. We don't have a cell phone. It's going to be awfully difficult to call you. Why can't I give you information now and you delay action? I can't 10 delay minutes? it, sir. When I take a call, I Okay, your name is Janet. Do you have a supervisor, Janet? Sure, do. Put the supervisor on. had been towed to an authorized Cadillac dealer, but even there, nobody was willing to give a serious estimate about how long it would take to repair the monster. Every day that we spend without moving forward, we have to recover on the road. The car could run at about 100 miles per hour, but it made less than 10 miles per gallon at that speed, so it would be very handy to get on the road sooner than later. In the meantime, we watch Mr. President, and we go there by using the subway.
How long did you stay here? Twenty-two years now. Twenty-two years. Yes, yes, twenty-two years, and it's very difficult, not just because of the uh, elements, but the government making many rules, which are in yeah. violation of the Constitution. This is my interview. Okay. That means... Hey, wait, I have to kill it and come again? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Is it is it from a from a German? Is it from a German? Raymond Nash. And uh, you're fighting against war? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The situation in the world is so terrible now because you know the president says with the Russia yeah. to reduce the no. We got to the rid of it. They will before they get it to us. So, you know, only the absence the only way that secure. But nothing will secure. As long as it's there, like they say, Chernobyl. Chernobyl is everywhere. Whenever a nuclear reactor, there will be another Chernobyl. A couple of weeks ago, they were here in the newspaper. So almost they have some something very terrible here in the Three Mile Island. So we don't want it. No more nuclear, whatever. Go to Iraq. The president said that he has a list of 179 nations who he considers as a people. Iraq, Iran, Somalia, Yemen, North Korea, uh, Syria, everywhere in the world, uh, including China, yeah. in China too, with nuclear bombs. No man is out of his touch. Therefore, we have to stop because the evil is right here. Why, you know, we have so much conflict is in Israel and Palestinian. Why they allow Israel to have 400 nuclear warheads? 400, yesterday, in the newspaper. B-52, F-16, Apache helicopters, tanks, submarines, cars, and they call Palestinian terrorists no, why they don't comply with the UN resolution? Why they don't admit the international observers? Yeah. No? Why they kill Rabin? Because they don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's the Who's? This is who's. The amount of people can allow the German? German? Ukraine. No, Ukraine. English. Ukraine. No, English. Russia, not? Seine Schuhe ausgezogen, Alter. Ey, das sieht übel zu aus.
4,000 miles to San Diego. We've got 12 days cruising in the midday sun, short shutters in front of us, short shutters in back of us. The caddy lies flat on the street with the back wheels plunged down in the wheel arch and the hood looming in front of us. We chill out in the supple white leather while the car shifts forward like a freight liner on the railway tracks. This is what driving the highways should be like. 500 cubic inches of displacement, 365 horsepower, 2.3 tons of massive steel, and the torque that the drive shaft melted right before I reached Washington. We paid with 800 bucks in three days. It's about time to make miles now. Tomorrow we will check off New York City and head towards Chicago. First night on the road. Two of us sleep in the car, one of us sleeps beside it. In less than one hour, the cops drop in. But not because we had hit the school bus yesterday. No, it's because we are sleeping on the street. So all of us have to squeeze into the car. Next morning, the battery is down. Again, the cops show up immediately. Instead of jump-starting the car and getting us back on the road, they tell us to put the camera away. Can one push-start a car with automatic transmission? Can one push-start 2.3 tons? Will the jumbo start up suddenly and shatter half a dozen compact cars before I get control over the waste violence of that monster? We will need a jump-start. Two hours later, we get help from an Asian. It was about time. The cops show up again. What do you do in New York City if you got just half a day? Usually there are no answers to the real important questions. But I was asking anyway. There was no answer. But everybody said, don't drive your car in Manhattan. So we parked the car outside and ferry across the Hudson River.
Shetland for them. The six pack gun will this good Shetland. All of a sudden, the car runs out of everything. No power steering, no brakes, no nothing. We run out of fuel. We roll out in front of a driveway. A gas can is in the trunk. We've got to get the tank filled before the cops show up or before a big ass truck rear ends the caddy. Americans are cheerful souls. If you drive at half speed in front of an American, he will follow you for hours without thinking about passing or even honking. Or he will pass you, then ask if you need any help. One can say all that is just a kind of detached, superficial cheerfulness. And it's not all about fun in life. But I don't care about if I sit in the bus and get out four stops later, anyway. It's nice then when a stranger tells me about his last evening's essential attempt to dry his son Ed's hamster in the microwave. Americans are more cheerful than other people. While on a typical road trip in the US, you have a certain exciting daily task. Looking for a motel. About an hour before sunset, you start watching out for signs, ads or buildings in the typical style of a motel, which at any other time of day just pass by without ever being noticed. The cheaper the look of the advertisement and the more techier the facade, the better. The most original sleazy motors are the private ones, which, at least along the main interstates, are by now almost totally displaced by the established brands. By and by you get a feeling where to look for the original private motors. I usually just leave the interstate and head towards the back country to find the motor quickly.
motives are more or less all the same. One and two stories, a door, and mostly left beside it, a window. Below the window is where the air conditioning has been installed, and it's usually so unbelievably loud that you can either sleep using earplugs, get drunk and pass out, or not sleep at all, because you forgot to ask for a non-smoking room, so therefore the window cannot be opened. After you draw lots, to see who the dump ass will be, who gets to sleep in front, and who also will be the one who gets steadily provided with ice cold air from the AC. Get the remote control and check the channels. Cool HBO or where is that damn weather channel? Finally, you take a look at the bathroom. You will find a bathtub almost always, even in the cheapest motors, although nobody would take a bath there. Oh, to enjoy an expensive red wine and read a good book by candlelight whilst laying in a yellow tub whose shower curtain hangs by its last two rings in front of you. Actually, they are pretty much equal, but every motor has its own certain individual characteristic. And while you are driving in the dusk, you are already wondering if you will walk down a red plush carpet tonight and if the indoor aerial will fall off in the middle of the NBA playoffs again. But despite these little surprises, you can always take two things for granted. The distance between your bed and your car won't be more than three meters. And your dresser drawer will contain a Bible. car doesn't start. The motor manager helps out with his Mitsubishi. We've already drained the manager's battery before we remember to check the fuel level. We've run out of gas.
We headed to Chicago and then all the way down. <laughs> Stay out of the casino. All right. <laughs> 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 no, uh, I just thought maybe, you know, I could bust up a deal on it if you guys wanted to sell it and leave. And no, right okay. now we need the car. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, later when you guys get ready. Later. Yeah. What do you think you'd be asking for? I have no idea how much he wants for a car. It's in a better, uh, the motor and brakes and all this stuff is in a better shape than, than it oh, looks yeah. like. <laughs> I can tell. Uh, otherwise, we <laughs> wouldn't drive the car. It makes 10 miles on the gallon. <laughs> yeah, but look at Not the more. price of gas here. Yeah. And then Compared what's to the one in yeah. Germany? How is it in Germany? I guess four, it's four times of that. tire. Tires on the one thing, but what bothers me more are the brakes. The brake power was poor before, but now the car slows down like a cargo ship. The brake caliper was loose and knocking on the brake disc over every bump. I wonder how that works, how this funktioniert here. Try the other tire yeah, and try yeah, to get where you're so. going. And if you have to, you can put that on. Yeah. Uh, take it to what? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's six I miles mean, down the 80 and then it, yeah, in, it's, in it's Willenboro. Middlebury. Middlebury. We uh, go up. Is the exit called Middlebury? Or? Yeah, right. It'll be a 107 mile marker. You know, just run real slow. Yeah. And stay off on the road. Yeah. 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 Okay, do we go that way or is this a No, no, one no, no. You go, you go around the cone, you go around the cone here and then up, you see where it says Ohio? Go that way to Middlebury. The other way goes to Elkhorn. And the middle, uh, middle tire shop is in Middlebury. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. 24 hour service, is what she was telling me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whoa, man. Da er det dahinter hen, Martin. Hvorfor? Ja, for hvis den gulde hovedbukse sender ind, så må vi ikke rigtig det. Ja. Den giver mig rigtig sådan der, end hvis du siger, at der ikke bliver det. Hvorfor er det med? Hvorfor er det med? Hvorfor er det med? Hvorfor er det med? Hvorfor er det med?
Ich habe heute überlegt, an der Referee äh, anzuhalten, um nochmal zu gucken. Hast du da noch nicht gemacht, um die Spannung ein bisschen zu erhöhen, oder? Ja. We're looking for a tire service, Miller Tire in... Okay, I can get you there. Dollar 45. One forty-five. that's two, three, four, five. Thanks. When you get to the stop sign, make a right turn, and go south all the way uh, down about seven miles. You'll okay. see McDonald's on one side and they're right across the street, no retire. Oh, okay. Thanks and a lot. Can I have a receipt for that? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. All the way down to McDonald's. Hey, ich bin da mit 70, 75 Meilen zu fahren, Leute. Der ja, alles viel leicht. Der Pipo. Also soll ich schneller fahren oder was? Ja, hier, ab. Da müssen wir sehen oder nicht? The risk no fun. <laughs> All the way down to McDonald's. Hold One, it, hold it. Two thousand miles. Yes! What does? Die sind echt nicht dicht. Das Ding fliegt mit gegen Ton. Ballern hier lang. Die sind dann nicht so überholt. 80 Meilen oder eben. Easy rider comes to the game. Peter Panda is the same. This is America. I think it's a fashion look, that it's here so pipe. Also, actually, here, but it's a stick in me. It's just from Scheiß. I bought such a length filler. Answer one single question. <laughs> I can get you there.
Miller Tire. It's Sunday, whereas in Germany everything would be closed down until Monday. The American is always ready for service, except Miller. The guy doesn't feel like it today. We drive on to the next Walmart Tire away. service. to make an oil change too, but they refuse to touch the motor. It's leaking, they tell us, and we wouldn't make more than 500 miles on it. The mechanic advises us to refill the oil frequently. Oil, which is as cheap as drinking water here. So my consultant and my cameraman search through the Walmart again. You get everything here from a panty line to a two-seated lawn mover. Paper shit. The last bit. Hey, what? What is it? Meine Karte? Ja. Oh, muss so fort erst mal losrennen. Ja, die ist mit drauf. Cool. Und dann bist du stehen bleiben wieder. <lacht> We don't go far. The brakes are shot. The next parts store has the required bolt for a 74 Cadillac Eldorado brake right behind the desk. Just waiting for us to buy it. We could go ahead and drive using the handbrake, if only it hadn't been broken also. So we've got to repair the thing right now. The mechanic comes along. He wants us to leave here soon, to avoid scaring the upright customers with our backstreet appearance. The vehicle is no longer a, well, show car. It's bedraggled by the rain, chewed up by the birds, and instead of a rear window, an old blanket garnishes the top. If we open the doors, garbage spills out in a steady flow. The 
Caddy is running. Tomorrow we will reach Route 66. What has to be spent on car repairs must be saved elsewhere. We sleep on the streets again instead of paying for a motel. We spent the night in a white trash neighborhood less than a hundred meters from the interstate where the trucks passed by at 80 miles an hour. It was dark already when we arrived at this place. In the sunlight it looks like this. Scruffy trailers waste. When the bums have had enough they leave. What's left is the garbage. Up until dawn we had been expecting to get a visit from some boost up rednecks in a pickup full of weapons and enraged dogs. We pack up our tent and leave. Americans live in their cars and they eat there. For that you need cup holders. Nowadays new cars will be judged by the number of cup holders they have. If you watch advertisements you will find that the number of cup holders seems to be as important as the number of cylinders or the vehicle load capacity. Modern minivans like the Chevy Venture have up to 17 cup holders. Above all, that could be the reason why our car has no longer been seen on the American highways. A missing cup holder. Although, if nearly everything on the car is powered, antenna, windows, seats, locking, trunk or the top, in 1974 even Cadillac wasn't thinking about cup holders. With a little luck, you might get a student of history at the Burger King counter serving you and he might hand you one of these plastic mobile cup holders along with the order. In this case you will forgive him the phrase Is a Pepsi okay? when you've asked for a coke. Uh, I get a, a combo number one king size uh, with the coke. Would you like cheese on your sandwich? Yep. Hey, friendly. Hi. Hi. Yeah, there, there, there you go. There you go. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye bye. Why you know we just have to keep it is Israel and Palestine. This is Fernando Martinez, you my friend. I listen to Radio Rio Rio, Texas, the most beautiful rock station in America. We arrived at Route 66. What is the Route 66 myth all about? In fact, it's just an arbitrary road that starts in the cold and rainy Chicago and ends three time zones, eight states and 2500 miles later on a sunny Pacific beach in Los Angeles. That's something, but it was once far more than that. Finished in 1926 and completely paved 11 years later, it was the main road to the west for a long time. In the novel The Grapes of Wrath, John Steinbeck tells about an ordinary family leaving Oklahoma to begin a new life in the praised land. Even before Steinbeck got, got the Nobel Prize in Literature 20 years later, he claimed the name The Mother Road and helped to immortalize Route 66. Songs, magazines, even a TV series were to follow. All attending to the myth of this street, the main street of America, the Will Rogers Highway, or simply America's Highway. Almost all the truckers know about the dock. What is that? It's a dock. But they claim it's a dock. It runs right in at the cars, and then right beneath cars worth. Miss it, just vanishes. There's no shades of it, no nothing. Because the cars were crash. And it causes an over about maybe two, three hundred accidents. But that's 
sit there and say, well, we saw a big black dock. But there ain't no dock out in the middle of nowhere. We have a heavy car. <laughs> yeah, well, you ain't gonna do much against the Phantom Dock. The dock that just ain't there. I know of the Phantom Dock of the comedy. Where are you from? Originally, I'm rural of Texas. That's where I'm going. I make a lot of that. You're a head in Camarilla. Bob Kellogg Ranch. Know that? Kellogg, Kellogg. The Kellogg's are sticking in the earth? Yeah. Oh, the Cadillac Ranch. That could be fine. Yeah. I know the Cadillac Ranch. It's on the main highway you'll find it. Everybody, everybody and anybody knows about the Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo. A typical day starts at a diner with toast and coffee refill for free. Every few days laundry. After that repairing the car. Today as well the gear is leaking. Five hours later, we are back on the road. The landscape grows increasingly more western in appearance. And what has been eminent for days suddenly becomes clear. The car isn't taking gas in properly anymore. We need a garage again, but even so, we turn off the interstate onto old Route 66. It's a damned lost spot. In a ghost town, a truck crosses our path and directs us westwards. What he doesn't mention is the dozen of miles of dirt route before us, which are far from any semblance of civilization.
Alles klar. Okay. Wir müssen die Kiste auf alle Hügel schieben. Ja, genau, guck mal, was da los ist. Ey, es hat schon ein Loch, es hat ein Loch in die scheiß Straße und reingeburnt, äh, so. Was? So krass ist die. Ja, aber du weiter vorn gehst, ich stehe mal. Nee, komm mal, komm mit rein, der kommt grad. Der kommt grad, komm rein. Mach nicht so schnell, Alter! Du musst mit, mit schieben. Ich glaube, dass ich die Karre hier nicht runterrollt. Ich will jetzt ziehen. Okay Freunde, ich stehe hier jutanäßig ähm, völlig krank auf einer Straße. Hinter mir laufen die beiden Leute gerade und versuchen Hilfe zu holen. Unsere Karre hat äh, völlig versagt. Die Batterie ist alle. Our opium is gone, but the hunger for movement remains. Your experience tells you that something will happen. You don't know what, but you sense that you will pass that place again. Maybe you will meet people. You don't know what type of persons they'll be and why all this happens, nor what for. But you can feel that sense of freedom in you. The freedom that let you do anything your imagination can picture. You will reach some point and you will go further. After some hours of walking through the desert, a car came by. An old lady picked us up and drove us to her ranch. We returned with her son to our car. And uh, so I was glad to 
Glad to get to retire. Okay. So yeah, we have to we have to get back to Washington on the 30th. Okay. No, oh, y'all welcome to stay as long as you like. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not a problem. That's all right. That's. How's, how's I've, I've had some of the guys that come over. They've stayed for two weeks. <laughs> Rocket launcher and a flamethrower. Well, of course, all the small stuff. <laughs> really? So it's and then the, the buffalo hunter. All of this. Mm -hmm. No, they it's broken. Uh, the what yeah, can we do? Well, we have to try to find another one. I didn't see anything uh, where we can they find something. Well, I, I don't know. I've got my parts man looking to see what, right. if anything, to say. Yeah. Because on a Chevrolet, a Chevrolet is longer. Mm. And a Cadillac is one by itself. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. You boys are lucky you broke down here because this yeah. guy can fix anything. Well, yeah, we are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Sonny? Well, hi there. How you been? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Up and down like all old men. <laughs> Make yourself at home. You can stay as long as you like, our host Rick says. This is exactly the scenario I was thinking of. Nothing matters anymore. If the trip will end here, we will be fine. It would be worth it. Our certain reality is so far at this place. The situation is so surreal that it feels like heaven. The bushing, the bushing in here is gone. Right inside, right inside here. Where did y'all broke down yesterday? Oh, oh just now. In the road down there. Oh, crap. Yeah. This used to be no Indian campground, though. You can go down here and find maybe some airheads and stuff right down here. Uh huh. Uh, you know. It's a commentary land. Yeah. It's pretty cold for a summer day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm not bitching because it's normally hot as hell, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
ones I carry when I go to the mountain. Oh. And you make that once? Yeah. You make this one? How do you make this? What is that? From one elk antler. Uh huh. Okay. And how do you make? Can you buy that uh, steel or? Yeah, just buy the bar of steel and whatever size I need, and I got patterns that is laid on the steel and then cut it out and then grind it. I don't do any forging, you know, nothing with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stainless yeah. steel, you can't forge it anyway. Yeah. But it's better steel. Okay. It's pretty uh, sharp. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I carry that on one side and my pistol on the other whenever <laughs> I'm up in the mountain where the bears and all that stuff at. Yeah. Yeah. You broke down in the, at the right place. At the right place, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the last night of the beer tent, I would go and I shave my beard oh, and cut my hair. And then I dress up like yeah, a Bavir 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 with the yeah. Bavarian, with the shoes and the leather uh, housing and the, all the shit, you know. Uh, and I still have the trousers they gave me, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't, didn't even remember. He said, yeah. ah, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right.
Our car has been repaired while we were chilling on a houseboat in the middle of the desert. Spare parts have been picked up in remote cities. A new exhaust pipe has been welded and the ignition repaired. Every few hours, Rick brought us cold beer, pizza, beef. When I told him that we had no cash left, right away he said, this won't cost you any buck. As we leave the farm, Rick wonders why we are going so soon. He refills our 25 gallon tank and we cruise away into the sunset. 20 minutes later, we pass the place where the caddy broke down. The place looks as it did two days before, like all the other places you pass by without ever coming to know what's behind. Straight to San Diego it would be 900 miles. We have three days left. That's enough time for a detour if the car maintains. So we leave for Las Vegas. It's dark and the full moon is shining through the clouds. The street follows the mountain wasteland. You can see a chain of cars for miles. And half an hour later you pass a hill offering the first view of Las Vegas. What you see is more than the sum of these words. The city lies down in a valley, throws masses of light in all colors. As you reach the bottom of the valley, you dip into the layer of flashiness.
Vegas. If you arrive from the west, traveling through the wasted desert country, you strive for modern comforts long before you reach the city of entertainment. If you travel like Hunter S. Thompson, in an American convertible with the trunk full of drugs, at the very least the sun will parch you dry in the death valley, whether you sip on either or not. You are still in the desert when you pass the first gas stations in Nevada and you get a taste of what is to come. A good dozen locals are sitting in front of one-armed bandits, even if there are no houses in the neighborhood. You see them staring at monitors, making repetitive motions and uttering some sort of emotions from time to time. That is the first time you wonder at the fact that these guys seem to represent all walks of life. An old teen, the solid cowboy, a common housewife, the businessman who is passing through, and the bored widow, every social level of American way of life is represented. weeks ago I got a pretty nice room right on the strip for 60 lousy bucks with a king size bed, golden taps and a porn channel. Today they are charging 200 bucks for it. That's Las Vegas. They take whatever they can get. There is no room for things like permanence and solidity.
searching for Hollywood. We tie it up on a strut and drive on. But we never find Hollywood. Tomorrow we've got to drop off the car in San Diego. Before that we take a look at the coast. Thank you. 
I mean, it'll scare the shit out of you. <laughs> Wenn irgendwas nicht optimal war, dann machen wir das auch mal.